Well, we are officially in a new decade. Can you believe it? It's been pretty awesome. But of course, it naturally begs the question, what should I be investing in for the next 10 years? Yeah, guys, so we are officially in 2020. Hopefully you had a happy and safe one. And uh, it's uh, it's been pretty crazy the last 10 years over in the stock market. The S&P 500 rose nearly 200% really unbelievable how far it's come now i know there's probably you know obviously it's coming it was coming out of a recession so it's been uh, you know but still a 200 percent move in the s p 500 is a pretty incredible feat to say the least and so that begs the question what's in store for the next 10 years i'm going to go over that in just a second but first i want to welcome you to my channel hi my name is brad and this is own the chaos. The stock market and investing is a crazy and chaotic place. So I've made it my mission to help you own it. So if you wanna see more content such as this, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, and while you're at it, give it a good like. I would appreciate it. So the S&P 500 has increased 184% since 2010. And I think that the economy is in just good enough shape to continue that trend as we move into the new decade. And as Warren Buffett always says, I wouldn't bet against America. But it does beg the question which stocks or which companies are going to stand out over the next 10 years. And I got the top three that I would consider investing in over the next 10 years. And the first one is going to be Apple. So Apple is the first company in history to achieve a market cap of one trillion dollars. And when you think about that, uh, you, you look at the GDP of other countries such as Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and the Netherlands, and Apple is actually larger than those economies. That is really an unbelievable number. And while Apple has given us incredible innovative products such as the iPhone, the iPad, and the MacBook Pro, I don't think Apple is done giving us its greatest gift ever. And that has everything to do with healthcare. Yes, Apple is working itself into the healthcare industry, which is a massive market. And uh, I'm not just talking about the Apple Watch, right? The Apple Watch obviously can help you with uh, your own personal healthcare, but Apple's actually moving into hospitals and other healthcare institutions to help uh, personalize your very own healthcare. Now, according to the CMS or Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, under the current law, national health spending is projected to grow at an average of 5.5% per year or for 2018 to 2027, which is close enough, and to reach nearly $6 trillion by 2027, which opens a massive opportunity for Apple to continue to grow their company. And, and this is going to be on a much grander scale than just a simple device such as the iPhone or MacBook Pro. This is going to allow Apple to really just kind of break into the market with really no competition at this point. According to Apple's website, Physicians now can engage with patients with their own, in their own health. When uh, their patients have their medical information organized into the view right under their phone, it can help them better understand overall health and provide key elements of their medical history when visiting a new doctor. This is something that we've never seen before. You have doctors that you know know you personally. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that do. Maybe uh, you've had a doctor that's known you since you were a child growing up, but what if you're visiting a new doctor that you've never seen before? It can be very intimidating or overwhelming, especially you know giving all of your personal information to somebody you don't really know. And what this does is it allows the physician to create a better relationship with uh, their patients. And this is just something we've never seen before. And I anticipate that during this decade, this is only going to catch on even more. And now that Apple has really kind of uh, hopped onto the forefront of this innovation, I think that that's really going to just continue to add to the value of this company. Now, another thing that Apple's working themselves into as it relates to healthcare is the electronic medical record system. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, it's probably not going to be a surprise, but it is mandatory now that all physicians store all of their patients' information, all of their medical records electronically, and now Apple is getting in on that space too. Just from what I've spoken with a lot of medical professionals, it's been a really big challenge to kind of get that all stored. And so now Apple is kind of stepping in and really kind of helping to take over that part and make things more efficient, make things more um, you know, easier to find. And, and, and really when it comes to shifting physicians, if you go to a new doctor or whatever, it makes things so much easier. It's going to help really in that healthcare space to be a much better uh, environment better industry than it is right now. Now there are other competitors into this space, but they really pale in comparison as it relates to 
Apple and what they're just capable of doing. They don't have the same resources that Apple does and I really do feel like Apple's going to end up taking over this space as a whole and really becoming the juggernaut as far as healthcare is concerned. And along with all three of these stocks that I'm going to be talking about, I'm gonna give my predictions for 2030 and the prediction for where Apple is going to be a market cap of $2.1 trillion or a price per share around $700 per share. Now the second stock that I'm going to be talking to you about is Tesla with a $75 billion market cap and an increase of 1700% since its 2010 IPO. Tesla I think is only going to continue to go up from here and it is still very much in its infancy stage. Now although it has gone up 1700% over the last 10 years, just in the third quarter of 2019 has Tesla actually started to become profitable in their business. And so that is why I think that this is, there's plenty of room for Tesla to have exponential growth moving forward. And uh, it really is only looking up from here. On top of the fact that they are just now earning a profit finally, I think that Tesla is really going to take over not only the, the electric vehicle market as they already seemingly have, but also the battery market. They have uh, you know, a, a tremendous control over the battery market, especially as it relates to uh, you know, automotive vehicles, but all, not only that, but also in the solar space. So they have uh, you know, the solar, their, their solar um, uh, company that they have acquired, which was Solar City, and uh, so the solar panel industry itself is going to really continue to propel Tesla upward and onward. But Tesla is also providing these batteries that will store the energy that these solar panels, uh, you know, absorb, so that you can use them for 24-hour continuous off-the-grid use. Now Tesla was under a lot of hot water about this, but I think that they are going to be the ones that come out on top of this. The company came under tremendous pressure from shareholders and short sellers that. For, for that acquisition because it acquired the struggling solar panel maker's debt as part of the deal. But one thing uh, that Ron Barron made clear was that for SolarCity on the basis of importance of, of its product portfolio to Tesla, according to Barron, SolarCity's products could help homeowners generate electricity at affordable rates thanks to the subsidies offered to renewable energy products to charge for their electric cars, which I think is genius and really kind of only attests to the business model that Tesla is trying to uh, continue to build upon. I spoke in a previous video that Tesla is looking to not only just build products, but also acquire resources to build those products so that everything is done in house. If they have control over all the natural resources that it takes to construct a battery, and then they have batteries to sell you, it's going to be really tough for any competitor to come into this space and really take them over. And I think that the more uh, that Tesla really kind of pushes themselves into the battery making space, to solar space, as well as electric vehicles, uh, you're really going to see pro Tesla propel and uh, be uh, just a juggernaut in this space as well. Which puts my Tesla prediction at a conservative $2,500 per share by 2030 and a valuation of $1 trillion. And the third and final stock that I think is going to be worth investing in over the next 10 years is Amazon. You know, Amazon has gone up over 500% just in the last five years. So where do you think it's going to land in the next 10? With a market cap just under $1 trillion, right behind Apple, I think that Amazon is going to be one that could potentially double or more in the next 10 years. And one of the reasons why I think that might be true is because Amazon is taking over the logistics and shipping industry all by itself. Recently, you've seen in the news how they are butting heads with FedEx, UPS, and even the Postal Service uh, over their parcel deliveries, and that Amazon's actually constructing and building its own parcel delivery service all done in-house. Now what that's going to do is that it's going to significantly decrease the revenues from FedEx, UPS, and even the Postal Service, and I think that it could potentially even do the Postal Service in. The Postal Service uh, relies on Amazon significantly to kind of keep themselves afloat because who sends mail anymore? Amazon has also recently expanded Amazon Air that includes 50 planes and several new regional hubs, including a $1.5 billion hub opening in Northern Kentucky in 2021. The global parcel delivery industry is valued around $350 billion as it stands right now. And with Amazon using its in-house shipping for only 26% of their orders, it's, there's reason to believe that they're going to want to move that to 100% at some point in time within the next 10 years. 
And you can imagine what that's going to do for the shipping industry as well as the valuation of Amazon's company. I think there's a lot of people that fail to realize just how much these uh, parcel delivery companies rely on Amazon for their business. And I think it's going to really impact uh, that entire industry, but also increase the valuation of Amazon overall. Let's not forget the Skynet type drones that Amazon plans to also create to personally deliver products and packages uh, that who knows, maybe we will end up seeing that over the next 10 years. But that's finally going to do it for me, guys. And lastly, I just want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think that these three stocks are going to be ones to definitely con to continue to invest in over the next 10 years? Where do you think they're going to end up? Now, as far as the valuation of Amazon over the next 10 years, I think by 2030 that Amazon could definitely be in that $2 trillion conversation. All depends on how they handle uh, the shipping and who knows what else they're going to get themselves into as uh, their growth continues to just explode over the next 10 years. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I just want to hear from you. Do you think that these three stocks are going to be ones worth investing in over the next 10 years? Where do you think they're going to land? Leave me some comments below. I really would like to hear from you. And guys, again, thank you so much for, for your support over the last year in 2019. I really can't uh, uh, wait to look forward to see what's going to be happening in 2020 and uh, that's going to do it for me. So again, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I will see you all before the bell and B. Smith is out. I don't know if there's really much else to say to that. Is it too late to invest in Tesla? It's only gone up 100% since August or since that interview took place, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. But 